Hello everyone! This is Teacher Joan and I am your teacher for today. Welcome to your science class. Today, we are going to learn about significance, processes of meiosis and spermatogenesis. But before we start, allow me to present to you our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to first explain the significance of meiosis in containing the chromosome number. Second, understand spermatogenesis. So let's learn and have some fun. And now let us start by showing you this. Spermatogenesis is the process by which the male gametes, called sperm, are created. Now you may recall that in order to create sperm that can combine with a female gamete, each sperm must be haploid and contain only one copy of each chromosome. You may also remember that in order to create haploid gametes, a cell must go through the process of meiosis which involves replicating its genome and then dividing, not once, but twice in order to create four haploid gametes from a single diploid cell. In humans, spermatogenesis takes place in the seminiferous tubules, which are an intricate system of tubules in the testes where spermatogenesis takes place. The seminiferous tubules of an adult human male can sometimes produce over 100 million sperm per day. In order to produce such a huge number of sperm, the tubules contain a very large and active population of dividing, self-sustaining germ cells, which are the cells that will become gametes. The germ cells that are found in the testes are called spermatogonia. Every day, somewhere around 25 million spermatogonia enter meiosis and become primary spermatocytes. After the first meiotic division, the cells double in number and are called secondary spermatocytes. Once the second meiotic division is completed, but before the haploid cells have had a chance to differentiate into actual sperm, the cells are called spermatids. These spermatids now have the correct number of chromosomes to be functional gametes, but they don't have the physical characteristics of sperm that allow them to swim to the ovum and fertilize it. A functional sperm looks a lot like a tadpole, but unlike tadpoles, sperm have only three basic components. The nucleus contains the haploid genome and not much else. The main job of the sperm is to get the haploid genome into the ovum, which will provide the other half of the genome, along with pretty much all of the cytosol, cell membrane, and cellular organelles. The acrosome is a structure that forms a cap over most of the nucleus of the sperm cell. The main job of the acrosome is to penetrate the outer layers of the ovum so that the sperm can get inside. The flagellum is a long whip-like cellular appendage that is used for locomotion. A sperm cell uses its flagellum in a whip-like fashion, lashing it back and forth to propel the sperm forward. Now you may be wondering where the sperm cell gets the energy to whip a long flagellum back and forth so vigorously. After all, the nucleus contains very little besides DNA, and the acrosome doesn't contain any mitochondria to provide energy. That just leaves the flagellum itself. Sure enough, a portion of the flagellum right here is surrounded by mitochondria that provide the ATP that powers the whipping motion. Okay, now let's see how all of this works in the context of the seminiferous tubules. As you can see from this highly magnified section, the testes are packed with seminiferous tubules which produce millions of sperm and release them into the lumens of the tubules. The tubules are lined with an epithelial layer of Sertoli cells, which are somatic cells of the seminiferous tubules that support and provide nutrients to the various sperm precursors. The rapidly dividing spermatogonium are located at the base of the Sertoli cells. Often, when a spermatogonium divides by mitosis, one of the daughter cells will take a position between Sertoli cells, enter meiosis, and become a primary spermatocyte. 
As meiosis continues, the primary spermatocyte migrates away from the base of the Sertoli cells and divides to form two secondary spermatocytes. The two secondary spermatocytes continue migrating and then divide to form four haploid spermatids. After meiosis is complete and each spermatid has the correct number of chromosomes, they begin the process of differentiating into fully functional sperm with their chromosomes packed tightly in the nucleus, an acrosome capping the nucleus, and a single flagellum to propel the sperm toward the ovum. Let's review. Spermatogenesis is the process by which the male gametes, called sperm, are created. Spermatogenesis takes place in the seminiferous tubules, which are an intricate system of tubules in the testes where spermatogenesis takes place. The tubules are lined with an epithelial layer of Sertoli cells, which are somatic cells of the seminiferous tubules that support and provide nutrients to the various sperm precursors. The rapidly dividing spermatic gonia, or sperm cells that are found in the testes, are located at the base of the Sertoli cells. When a spermatic gonium enters meiosis, it becomes a primary spermatocyte and migrates away from the base of the Sertoli cells. Then it divides to form two secondary spermatocytes, which continue migrating and then divide to form four haploid spermatids. After meiosis is complete, and each spermatid has the correct number of chromosomes, they differentiate into fully functional sperm. Mature sperm have a nucleus that contains the haploid genome and not much else. They also have an acrosome cap, which will be used to penetrate the outer layers of the ovum so that the sperm can get inside. In addition, they have a single flagellum, which is a long whip-like cellular appendage that is used for locomotion. The sperm cell uses its flagellum, lashing it back and forth to propel the sperm forward. What does the video show? That's right! The video shows the process of spermatogenesis. What is spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis is the process of gamete or sexual production among male animals, including human. This process occurs in the male reproductive organs called testes. Spermatogenesis is the production of sperm by the process of meiosis. It takes place in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. The entire process takes about two months. Spermatogenesis begins at the puberty, 13 to 16 years of age, and continues until all age. Located at the periphery of each seminiferous tubule are deployed two end stem cells called spermatogonia. During embryonic development, the spermatogonia actively divide by mitosis to ensure that the continuous supply of sperm is always available throughout the entire lifetime of the human male. Hormonal influence stimulates the spermatogonia to grow and differentiate into diploid cells called primary spermatocytes. Spermatogenesis begins at puberty. The secretions of the hormone testosterone stimulates the primary spermatocytes to meiotically divide. Meiosis 1 producing haploid cells called secondary spermatocytes. The secondary spermatocytes, although haploid, still contain two chromatids per cell. The secondary spermatocytes undergo a second meiotic division or the meiosis 2, and each cell produces two spermatids that are haploid. A total of four spermatids are produced by this process. The Sertoli cells residing in the seminiferous tubules aid in the maturation process of the spermatids. The matured spermatids called sperm cells, also called spermatozoa, are stored in the epididymis, ready to leave the male body and fertilize an egg. Thus, during spermatogenesis, one diploid primary spermatocytes give rise to four haploid sperm cells. The full process of spermatogenesis takes about 10 weeks in the human male. Unlike in females, 
The cells in the testes that develop in the sperm cells are continuously produced throughout the male's reproductive years. How do the sperm cells produce in the testes? Very good! When the testes are exposed to FSH or follicle stimulating hormones from the pituitary serotonin cells within the seminiferous tubules and the testes produce sperms through meiosis. Sperm cells in males are formed in the process of spermatogenesis. How many sperm cells are formed after meiosis? That's right! In humans, meiosis is the process by which sperm cells and egg cells are produced. In the male, meiosis takes place after puberty. Teploid cells within the testes undergo meiosis to produce haploid sperm cells with 23 chromosomes. A single deploid cell yields four haploid sperm cells through meiosis. Now, how many numbers of chromosomes are there in daughter cells after the whole process? Very good! The cell copies its chromosomes, but then separates the 23 pairs to ensure that each daughter cell has only one copy of each chromosome. A second division that divides each daughter cell again to produce four daughter cells. What it Normally, meiosis causes the halving of chromosomes material so that each parent gives 23 chromosomes in each of their sex cells. During fertilization, the 46th number of chromosomes are restored. However, there are times that meiosis do not happen properly. An egg or sperm could end up with too many or few chromosomes. After fertilization, the child may receive more extra chromosomes such as in the case of Down syndrome or having a missing chromosome called monosomy. Pregnancies with chromosomal defects can still go on, full term with health problems or still blind, may be miscarried. About 60% of the trimester miscarriages are attributed to abnormal chromosomes numbers. right number of chromosomes in the absence of meiosis. Its number would continually increase. Meiosis, therefore, ensure that the chromosome number of organisms stay constant generations after generation. Not only that, meiosis also ensures that each daughter cell receives a copy of each kind of chromosomes. Thus, each daughter cell would receive each kind of genes. The phenomenon of crossing over and the independent assortment of chromosomes that happen during fertilization ensure a crossing over and independent assortment of chromosomes that happen during fertilization ensure that the chromosomes are distributed to the daughter cells in various combinations bringing about the tremendous variations in the characteristics of the organisms. These variations and the characteristics would allow the 
organisms to adapt better to the changing environment.